the other day I was working on the Bits UI rewrite for Spell 5 and I kept running into this really annoying issue that was only happening on my iPhone, on the Safari and Chrome browsers, but only on my iPhone. I wasn't able to reproduce it in the web. So I thought, hey, maybe I should just go ahead and head into my browser's dev tools, open up the little mobile emulator they have here, check the console, and then try to reproduce the behavior here. But unfortunately, I couldn't reproduce it. These browser mobile emulators, the only thing they should be trusted for is you know, CSS styling. So making sure you have a responsive design, but for actual functionality, for actual events and things like that, that are unique to the platform, the browser running on that platform, it's always best to actually debug with the platform itself. Now, unfortunately, that's not so easy out of the box, right? We don't have these awesome dev tools on our mobile devices. Now, some of you might have them if you're using, a, I think a Google phone or something has the ability to do like remote debugging, but I have an iPhone, I'm Apple gang. And so I'm here trying to figure out how I'm gonna get these event listener logs. I was trying to see what the order of events that were fired was, and then also to make sure that all these events actually fired for some context. And so I'm thinking, okay, well, this runs on the client side, these event handlers. I guess I could set up a log server on my local host here and push the logs up via an API or something like that. But it seemed wildly inefficient. And then I have to tear it all down, bring it back up whenever I wanna reuse it. It just didn't seem like a great idea for local development here on this project. And so I was certain that there had to be some type of tool out there, and sure enough, there is. So there's a tool out there called Iruda, and this is a console for mobile browsers. So I'm surprised I hadn't heard of this before. It has 17 and a half thousand stars, but I'm super stoked that this tool exists because it provides so much awesome functionality to your mobile device. So if we look here, these are a couple of screenshots. Let me zoom in a bit. These are all individual iPhone screenshots. But you can see they basically give you the same type of dev tools you get on desktop, but on mobile. Of course, without all of the bells and whistles, but what I wanted to do was just check the console. Very simple. Give me some logs. I want to see what order these events are firing in. And so it provided just that. So I decided to set it up in my Selkit application. So I want to show you all how I did that today. So I'm here within the Bits UI code base. Doesn't matter what code base you're in. This is that button there that I'm using to kind of test what order these events fire and to make sure that all these events are firing. And I went ahead and installed Iruda. So your first instinct might be to say import Iruda from Iruda. Now, unfortunately, if we go back to our localhost 5173, refresh the page, we're going to see that the app crashes. And if we check our console, we're going to see that self is not defined. That's because Iruda cannot be executed in a server side environment, which Kit by default tries to first execute our code in, in that node environment can't happen. So we actually have to use a dynamic import here and only do that on the client side. So rather than doing that, I'm gonna say on mount, and we'll make this asynchronous because dynamic imports are asynchronous. And we'll say Iruda is equal to await import Iruda dot default. So we want the default export from Iruda. And then we can just call Iruda dot init here. And this is all in the Iruda documentation. They don't specifically show you how to do it with Svelte, of course, and Svelte Kit. But they do show, hey, you can add this script to your page. It's also available on JS Deliver. And then of course you can install it with NPM, which is what I did here, add it as a dev dependency. Okay, so that's all we had to do. And then now if we go back into our local host, our dev server will refresh the page. We're gonna see that we have this little icon here in the bottom right. Now, if I click on this icon, we'll see we have dev tools on top of dev tools here because we're on the desktop but that also means that we can access this from our phone. So here I've pulled up an iPhone 15 Pro using you know, Xcode Simulator, but you could also just like screen mirror your iPhone in the same way or just actually use your phone. I just didn't wanna put my actual phone out there on the internet. But as we can see here on this mobile device, we have access to this little settings button here that we can press and it's gonna open up the console on our mobile device. And so now it was time to confirm our suspicions. Is this on-click event being ignored for some reason or another on mobile Safari on an iPhone. So let's click on the touch me and sure enough, we get on pointer down, on touch start, on pointer up, on touch end. So we were not able to reproduce that. If you recall inside of our browsers dev tools using that mobile emulation, right? So if we check here again, touch me, we're getting an entirely different set of events. We get on click at the end, whereas on our phone, we did not get that. So this is a really useful tool that I found recently. I felt like I'd be doing a disservice if I didn't share it with you all. So I hope that you found this useful. If you did, don't forget to go star that repo on GitHub. It's an awesome project. I'm super excited that I know about it now. 
and I'm going to put that in my toolbox. So thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.